Hello art friends and welcome to today's video. So I'm sure you've seen that trend going around where people follow other people's tutorials and it's more of a makeup based thing I think. Most of the tutorials that I see are following makeup tutorials from other YouTubers. But I did see one guy, and I'll link that video down below because it's an awesome video, um, following an art tutorial. And I was like, hmm, this is very cool. So I decided to do it, and who else but Lavender Town? So if you don't know who Lavender Town is, she's an artist on YouTube, and she also makes comics, um, and she does some very, very cool stuff, like do's and don'ts videos. And so one of the topics of those do's and don'ts videos is backgrounds. And I have a heck of hard time on backgrounds. I never do them because I am horrible at them. So I decided let's confront our fears today and check out this video. So I never watched the video before um, doing this picture and it is a very good video with some very good tips. First thing I'm doing is drawing a character first. This is actually a pretty big don't and a lot of people don't think about it, but if you're doing a piece that's really focused on a background, you should draw um, you shouldn't draw the character first because you want to consider where the character fits in the uh, drawing and if you draw them first, then you're drawing everything around them rather than having an environment and then putting them naturally somewhere inside of it. So tip number 1. Don't draw the character first or straightforward. So if you're drawing backgrounds, you're gonna wanna focus on the background, draw your background, and then draw your character in your background. Um, so in her video, she does you know the before, the, the don'ts, and then the do's. And in the before video, she draws her character first, and then she kind of has to build her background onto this character. And it makes things very awkward from um, a perspective point of view. Uh, it's just not a good idea, so, and that's probably something that I honestly would have done. So I did draw the background first, and then I drew my characters into my background, and I didn't draw them straight forward um, either. Instead of going straight into a sketch, I'm going to make a very small square and quickly just do a super rough version of what I'm picturing in my head without worrying about details at all. This is called thumbnailing for you, those who don't know, and um, it's really, really useful just to see in a super, super small scale a very rough sketch. So the very first thing that she says to do is to draw a thumbnail. Um, so I drew two thumbnails and I ended up liking the second one a lot better. An artist, if you're curious, on YouTube who does very, very, very good um, thumbnails is Danica Sills. And she will draw her thumbnails um, in the beginning of her video sometimes and they're so awesome to look at. So if you don't know what a thumbnail is, it's kind of redrawing the same picture that you have in your mind, just maybe moving some elements here and there and seeing what flows better. Um, so I did that. I usually don't do that. I guess I just kind of just draw a sketch and then move things around from there, but having different thumbnails to look at also is very, very helpful. So now I'm adding in what's known as the Hiroshige element. He was well known for adding these big foreground elements that come in front of what you would typically be looking at in a painting. Um, the next tip that she has, and she spoke about quite a bit, is the foreground element. Um, there's a name for it, I'm not sure on the name, but it's basically when you draw something blocking the view. So she drew a tree branch, I also drew a tree branch um, blocking the view of the, of the viewer who's looking at your picture. And this element makes it look like there's depth in your picture. Um, you know, there's trees that are closer, trees that are farther away, trees that are blocking the view. Um, and that's really, and that's a really cool effect. And that also has to go with the height slash depth slash horizon line. Um, and that's just, you know, objects that are further away are going to be less uh, saturated. They're going to be very light and objects that are closer are going to be very dark um, because they're closer to you and you can see them better. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink down my painting a lot or well zoom, zoom away from it in my case and just do a super rough color study on top which basically means you're just like splotching in colors wherever you think they might look good and not worrying about the little details and just trying to get an overall vibe of what you want it to look like. Another thing that she said that I've never have done before which is very crazy because this this tip right here is super super helpful is to do a color study so a color study is whenever you have drawn your um your sketch and before you add any color you do a color study so you just throw color onto it and you're not worrying about lines or anything um you just throw color and what lavender town explains it as is your brain is just getting the color out so you're not really having to think you just you're just just putting what your eye wants to see, I guess. Um, and it helps you place things better because you're doing it faster and you're not thinking about it. Um, and it really did help because at first I wanted to draw the cliff platforms green um, or color them green. And then once I put that on the paper, I was like, this is ugly. So I ended up turning them maroon and I think it looks so much better. Um, and I don't know if I would have done that without the color study. Uh, another thing that she said is make sure that your characters are interacting. So are they're interacting with the environment. Um, so I didn't really do that one that much. I just have kind of like a demon walking and then I have like a little guy who's trying to maybe slay the demon. But I think I might delete that little guy because I don't really like the way that he turned out. Um, but all in all, I would call this pretty successful. I don't know. I honestly don't know if I would have created something like this. Um, without Lavender Town's, you know, list in my head. She, like I said, she does those do's and don'ts videos, and they're so helpful. She has some on posing, she has some on expressions, she has a lot. So if you're ever having a hard time drawing something, always look up a tutorial. That's like 80% of what I do um, when I'm drawing. I look up tutorials and how to do this, and I look up references, and, and it just helps if you're feeling a little bit lost. Like, like I am in backgrounds, I feel lost. But yeah, all in all, I'd call this a success. I, re I really, really love this drawing that I did. Um, I think it looks super cool. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below and everything, all the videos that I mentioned um, will be in the description. So definitely check those out. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.